What's up everybody, Micah here with Tactic California, your source for gear reviews, training, and gun news from behind enemy lines here in California. Today we're talking about something super cool, uh, the MDR from Desert Tech. I'm so pumped for this. Uh, if you want to come train with us, check us out at tacticalifornia.net. We got California carbine classes. We got tactical handgun classes all coming up. So make sure you check it out. Now let's get to this thing. The Desert Tech MDR is a super legit bullpup. I have owned a lot of guns. One of my favorites is a Tavor. It's an X95 variant. I think that that's really where my heart comes from loving bullpups is the X95 really won me over to the bullpup design in terms of rifles. I love bullpups. And when Desert Tech came out with the MDR, the first thing I thought was, man, that thing is sick, but I'm not gonna be able to get it in California, at least not easily. However, new for 2020, they now have this California compliant option. In order to make it compliant, they opted to go with featureless. What that means is they got rid of a collapsible stock, which they obviously don't have on a bullpup, a pistol grip, a vertical foregrip or a flash hider. So they've put a muzzle brake on here, which is their own. And may I say, greatly helps reduce recoil. It's a really good muzzle brake. Uh, no vertical foregrip, obviously. So really all they had to do with this rifle was put a fin on it. So this fin here uh, prevents your thumb from going around it. And California thinks, oh, now you're super safe. Because the pistol grip's so far back and the action's behind where the pistol grip would be anyway, uh, it's really easy to maneuver uh, without having your thumb around it. I get it. This is dorky, this sucks. It is what it is. It is just a couple screws, it is just a paddle, uh, and that's really the only thing on here that I wouldn't keep on here if I could change anything. Now what they've also done with this rifle is they've added a 20 inch barrel to make it California compliant. We have a ridiculous law in California that says our overall length of our rifles needs to be 30 inches or longer in its shortest fireable configuration. So whereas most people would put a 16 inch barrel on here, the rifle would be 26 inches, they'd be good to go because that's federal. Uh, the state of California said, that's too dangerous, that's too short. It's too short by four inches. Uh, so we need, to, we need to make it longer. So that's exactly what Desert Tech did. Put a 20 inch barrel on there and may I say, the ballistics, the effectiveness of this 20 inch 5.56 rig while being a bullpup, I mean, this thing is super handy for being a 20 inch rig. Very clever of Desert Tech, I love that they did that. Let's talk about what makes the MDR a gun worth having. The fact that it is a fighting rifle that can go back and forth between large frame calibers and small frame calibers is really its, its biggest selling point to me personally. Uh, this gun is in 5.56, but if you change the mag well and you change the barrel, you can then use 308 magazines and you could have this thing in 308. Uh, 5.56, new for 2020, they're doing 300 Blackout and 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, dude, seriously, a 20 inch bullpup 6.5 Creedmoor sounds ridiculous. That is an awesome idea. I'm glad that Desert Tech is moving forward with that. Very, very cool. Now I'm gonna break this review down into three categories. Accuracy, reliability, and handiness. Let's go ahead and start talking about accuracy. I shot 55 grain, 62 grain, and 77 grain ammunition out of this gun. The only accuracy testing I did was with this EOTech and magnifier. It's only 3X magnification. But at 100 yards, I was getting less than one inch group, so a little bit tighter than one inch. And I gotta be honest with you, that's really good shooting on my part. And that means that this gun is capable of probably better than that. And to be honest with you, a bullpup with a 20 inch barrel, being able to do sub MOA accuracy, dude, that is lights out. That is, this is super cool that you can get that kind of accuracy out of a bullpup, out of a package that's really compact and easy to use. When I removed the barrel and reinstalled it, I only saw a point of impact shift by one inch. My group started going down and to the right about an inch. Well, why would you be removing the barrel on your gun? Why would you care that it would maintain accuracy? Well, the fact that this gun can be 5.56, 308, 300 blackout, 6.5 Creedmoor, obviously I might wanna change the barrel from time to time, and it's good to know that if I have some point of reference of where my impact was with a certain caliber, with a certain optic setup, 
uh, then it's nice that it returns relatively to that zero. Now, something really interesting about this rifle is if I move my tape switch out of the way, you'll see this little black Picatinny rail section here. This is actually attached to the barrel and piston system. So when you remove this barrel from the gun, this is actually staying with it. So Desert Tech sells a micro red dot mount that attaches to this small rail section and thus the optic stays with the barrel, theoretically allowing you to stay zeroed to that barrel. Why would you care? Well, again, because this thing's so highly convertible that I can put a 308 barrel or a 556 barrel or whatever in here, it's nice to keep an optic with that barrel zero. So a really cool feature. And again, even though I showed that this is really only uh, about a one inch shift, at least in my experience, replacing the barrel or pulling it out and putting it back in, uh, still cool that you could even tighten that up a bit by using their mount. Now, I also have to say that this is kind of the only thing I really have to complain about the rifle uh, is that this rail section gets piping hot uh, because it is a part of the piston system. So uh, if you're a C clamper like me, um, your thumb can touch that from time to time and it'll really get you. So make sure that you wear a glove or cover it up some way uh, with my Surefire tape switch over it. Yes, it got warm. Yes, it's probably not good for my Surefire tape switch, but I had no problems whatsoever. Uh, and it, yes, the, the switch got warm, but it didn't feel too hot and it kind of acted as a buffer for my thumb. So I, I actually, uh, I'm gonna keep that there to make sure that I don't burn myself in the future. Number two, reliability. If you have a rifle that's a fighting rifle and it doesn't run, what good is it? In the time I've spent with this rifle, I've probably put 1,500 to 1,800 rounds. I kind of lost track there a little bit. Uh, and um, no issues whatsoever with everything the way it's supposed to be on the gun. Uh, I, I absolutely love how reliable this gun is. And the forward ejection is really cool because it means that I can shoot it as a right or left-handed shooter without switching ejection. So even though it's ejecting on the right side, because the ejection moving forward, as a left-handed shooter, it's not hitting me in the face like a lot of bull pups tend to do. But let's say you're left-handed shooter and you wanna set it up for left-handed shooting, no problem. The ejection port and the other shoot that's on the other side here can be swapped with one another. It's super simple, super fast, and voila, now it's ejecting on the other side. Again, still forward with the forward ejection that the rifle normally comes with, uh, but now it's on the other side, so it's a little more out of your way. The Desert Tech MDR can be fired without the ejection chute on. This does prevent the shells from being redirected forward and also obviously not having a dust cover. Could present some problems in terms of dirt ingressing, but it is cool to note that if it does fall off because it is a piece that uh, could be detached, although I think highly unlikely, the rifle will still function. Also, without the forward ejection chute in place, it just ejects straight out to the side. So I do like that you have that option. Handiness. Let's talk about how handy the rifle is. Because it's a bullpup, it's obviously already really handy. The fact that it's a 20 inch barrel on such a short rig uh, means I get super good accuracy with it's still a pretty tight package. I mean, 30 inches overall length, that's still pretty small for something that's this capable. So I really like that about the gun. And this gun is completely ambidextrous. The safety is on both sides. The magazine release is on both sides. The ejection can be swapped to the other side should you need to. And the charging handle is on both sides as well as its bolt release being underneath. So mag insertion and bolt release, again, all accessible from either side of the rifle, really well thought out. The charging handle is a little quirky, so I, I wanna talk about that real quick. It normally sits in a locked position. What I mean by that is if you try to just pull on the charging handle, it's not gonna come back. You actually need to grab it, pull down, and then back to charge the weapon. Release, obviously, and you'll chamber around, assuming you had a loaded mag in there, and then you're good to go. The charging handle, if you wanna lock the handle back, pull down, pull back, and then rotate up, much like a roller lock on an HK, MP5 or something like that. And yes, for you cool guys, you can HK slap your Desert Tech 
So that's extra cool points. Make sure you do that when you're on the range. I know I did. Now the charging handle on this gun, it's locked position isn't where it actually locks on an empty magazine. So if I put this charging handle down, you'll notice that the gun's locked up. It, it's, it's not actually gonna go home just from hitting the charging handle on an empty magazine. The follower's pushing up on the bolt catch. So if I was gonna do a speed reload, I'd hit the, I'd hit the magazine release, I'd insert a new magazine, and then the bolt release is back here behind the magazine. Push that and the gun will go home and now you're ready, loaded for round two. The forend on this gun is M-Lock, so that does mean that I can add a multitude of M-Lock accessories to the gun, which I have done here. I've got a kinetic development group, quick detach rail section for my Surefire to sit on. Uh, really easy to attach, to put on and off. Uh, and then you've obviously got uh, Picatinny rail across the top, so that's what the PEC is sitting on, as well as the tape switch and the Eoteca magnifier. All set up uh, with short real estate means that this thing's laid out really effectively. Also new for 2020, they got a side ejecting kit if you want to retrofit the gun to uh, eject to the side instead of forward. And then also new for this year, they've upgraded the gas block to better aid in reliability essentially through mud and water testing. Uh, we've got six adjustment points, which is awesome, six settings. Uh, I've gone through each one, I've shot under each one, and I can definitely feel a difference. Yes, you can shoot this thing suppressed. They've upgraded the polymer resin here for the stock. So the, the whole gun is a little bit stronger, a little bit more reliable, and then they've added an upgraded trigger. And I am telling you right now, I own a lot of bullpups. I got an X95 Tavor, I got a KSG kel uh, I've shot a lot of other bullpups. Trust me when I say this is the best out of the box trigger I've ever felt on a bullpup. The trigger has a nice wall and a good break, and the audible reset is amazing. That's your reset. Uh, gun, it probably breaks at around five to six pounds. Uh, that was the average I was able to pull, which again, for a bullpup, a five to six pound trigger out of the box, dude, check that box. That is an awesome feature for this rifle. All in all, with the ability to change calibers from 308, 65 Creedmoor, 556, and 300 Black, to go between 16 inch or 20 inch barrels, um, this thing is a really cool rig, all for being a bullpup. It's incredibly accurate, incredibly reliable, and incredibly handy, both for right and left-handed shooters. I think this rifle is definitely something you need to be looking at if you're looking for a do-all rifle. If you like this video, please click like down below and subscribe to this channel for more gear reviews, training, and gun news from behind enemy lines here in California. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram linked below, and if you wanna come train with us, Make it happen. Head on over to TacticCalifornia.net. I'm Micah with Tactic California. Thanks for watching. <laughs>